Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. This is Robin, Connecticut. First morning of the boil. We've got about 75 gallons of sap from yesterday's haul. Got the sun coming up behind us. We'll see you in a few minutes when we get the boiler set up or evaporate. We're using a Smoky Lake Maple Dauntless evaporator. It's 20 by 40 fire brick in the front and it's fully insulated with ceramic insulation. It's a great little unit, so easy to move. Because I'm on a hill or a little bit of an incline right here, I use the, uh, the ramps to put the evaporator on. I'll slide it up, you'll see that in a second, and that'll give me the opportunity to level it out and the smokestack will clear this wall of the barn and it makes for a perfect setup. We'll be loading right over here. Most of the evaporator, the steam will be going out the front as well as the smoke. So it's a decent setup, a little wonky to get it set up originally, but once you're plugged in, it works like a charm. So I need to shout out to my wife who supports me and all this crazy stuff I get involved in. She just came out and said, "Hun, you forgot your coffee. A few things that I love in life besides her. Coffee is one of them, sugaring and burning wood. I'm a simple guy. Here's to a good spouse. Line her up and get her up on the ramps. When the evaporator is set on the ramp, we use a level to check it front and back and side to side to make sure there are no low spots in the pan. This is important, especially when we get down to the end, when we're cooking it down to three gallons and under. We don't need any low spots. Shims and a little bit of motivation usually helps get it level. Then we'll put fiberglass insulation around the top so when the pan sits on the unit, is a nice tight seal and we don't lose any of the hot air or get any cold air sucked in. The preheater goes on and then we'll start setting up our guidelines making sure they're ready so when that final part of the smokestack goes in we can secure the chimney and not have to worry about it coming down in an off wind. This little giant ladder is invaluable comes in really handy with the two shelves. So this is the bucket we use for our preheater. Holds about five gallons if we can keep our eye on it from here. It's a very simple, we've got a valve in the middle a valve over here, and this is going to get hooked up to our preheater, so we always have good hot sap going into our boil. Setting up our Smoky Lake flat pan for the last boil of the year. For a unit this size, dry pine is absolutely the best. You can see here this gap. This is what one boil is for us, 40 gallons, and we use that one level right there. It basically comes out to three wheelbarrows full for each 40 gallons, plus or minus. Depends on the temperature outside, the wind, and a couple of other factors. We're 
filling up the pan for the first time, so what we do is we measure three gallons of sap. And I've got my sight glass over on this side. And once the sap, once it levels off, I'm gonna put a red line where three gallons is. As we boil, when it gets down to that red line, that means we've gotta keep our eye on the pan. I'll have two lines set up, one's high and one's low. We're gonna keep shooting for the middle and we can address, adjust our uh, pre-warmer accordingly. This way we can, get, we can add sap as fast as we evaporate it. Got our preheater hooked up, got copper coil in there. I've got a link in the descriptions if you want to check out the video how I made this. What we need to do now, because our evaporator is boiling, we're going to run sap through the preheater. We're going to catch any of that burned sap that comes through. And once it comes clear, then we can fire up the, the uh, warmer to go right into the evaporator pan. So this is how we do it. Yep. Takes a little while. Those coils are super, super hot, so the steam wants to make it back up to the to the uh, sap bucket. It's creeping its way down the coil, cooling it off little by little. So as this sap starts coming out, any of the burnt stuff that was in the copper tubing will go into the can, and we're good to go. Now we can set it to evaporate. So using this as a basically a, uh, a valve and that's going to make our flow come higher or lower and at this point once we have this boil and we get our act together for the beginning of the season get our sea legs we'll keep our eye on the sight glass we'll always have sap in our bucket and we'll just keep maintaining it so we get a good strong boil throughout the course of the day one thing we haven't set up yet that I didn't show you is the O you know what bucket. We keep a small bucket of sap next to the evaporator. If any of us see the pan getting too low and it starts to burn, the sap goes right into the into the evaporator pan and that could save you from scorching the pan and ruining your sugaring season. Things to master. Things will never know. Stars burn the fastest I think I know 